Hello, I am Dr. Li Yu Shan, and I will talk about thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura (TTP) and hemolytic uremic syndrome (HUS). Thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura (TTP) has been classically diagnosed with the pentad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, which causes a Coombs negative hemolytic anemia. Hemolytic markers such as haptoglobulin will be low with a raised LDH, bilirubin, and reticulocytes count. The typical blood phlegm seen will be of numerous fragmented cells or cystocytes with anisopoikilocytosis, polychromasia, and thrombocytopenia. The thrombocytopenia is due to consumption of platelet during the formation of microthrombi. Renal impairment usually presents acutely, which may require dialysis support, but usually is not the main presentation of manifestation. Neurological manifestation can have a wide range of presentations such as headache, cognitive impairment, blurring of vision, hemiparesis, seizure and coma, etc. Fever. This can be non-specific but usually present in most of the patients. Hemolytic uremic syndrome HUS, usually occurs in children and have the classical clinical presentations of acute renal impairment which may be the main clinical presentation and may require dialysis support. However, the classical hemolytic uremic syndrome usually runs a self-limiting process without long-term sequelae. Patients also have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia maha with a similar laboratory findings like TTP. The etiology of TTP can be divided into congenital or acquired. There are many etiology for acquired TTP and this have to be considered when the patient is diagnosed with TTP. The main reason to ascertain the etiology is because response to treatment is different. HUS is classically divided into typical, associated with diarrhea, or atypical, not associated with diarrhea. The main difference between these two is that classical HUS has excellent prognosis with supportive treatment and self-resolving while a typical HUS needs plasma exchange with poorer prognosis, we will concentrate more on the classical HUS in this presentation. The pathogenesis behind TTP is due to the deficiency of ADAMS13. ADAMS13 is a metalloprotease which cleaves high molecular weight or ultra-large von Willebrand factor to smaller von Willebrand factor. The ultra-large von Willebrand factor is very thrombogenic and its presence triggers the development of microthrombi in the microvascular circulation. The microvascular thrombi cause mechanical damage to the red blood cell and the typical picture of TTP. The level of ADAMS13 is usually low in patients with TTP, but the level is not mandatory to make the diagnosis of TTP. This is because this test has limited availability, inter-laboratory difference, and the urgency to treat the patient before the result of the test is available. In classical HUS, the culprit is due to virotoxin that is present in the bloodstream of patient. This virotoxin causes disruption of the endothelia and creates a prothrombogenic environment. The diagnosis of both TTP or HUS is based on clinical features or criteria. Although classically TTP have five main clinical presentations, however, the presence of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia with thrombocytopenia without other explainable cause is the key to the diagnosis of TTP. Few guidelines also recommended similar approach to the diagnosis of TTP. This is because when patients have all the clinical features, they are usually very sick with a high mortality rate. Early intervention based on high clinical suspicion with supportive laboratory results will help with the diagnosis of TTP. It is important to investigate for possible etiology of TTP as this has prognostic significance to plasma exchange and other conventional treatment. HUS usually present with classical triad. However, certain patients may have more extensive multi-organ disease such as enterocolitis, neurological complications, liver dysfunction, pancreatic and cardiac problems. In this rare situation, differentiations between TTP is difficult. 
This slide shows the typical blood phlegm of patients with microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. These arrows show the classical cystocytes. These cells are fragments of red blood cell due to mechanical damage when the red blood cell pass through microcirculation with microthrombi. Blood phlegm usually will have increased young red blood cell or polychromatic cell and also thrombocytopenia. In contrast, the slide at the lower left shows a normal blood phlegm. There is absence of fragmented cells and no thrombocytopenia. TTP or HUS is a clinical diagnosis. There are many other differential diagnoses to be considered. Shown here are the main differential diagnoses. DIVC or disseminated intravascular coagulation have similar findings on blood phlegm, although with the less fragmented cells and may have raised white blood cell with toxic granulation in the neutrophils. Patients usually have underlying etiology for the development of DIVC, such as infection. Ivan syndrome is an autoimmune disease characterized by autoimmune hemolytic anemia, IHA, and immune thrombocytopenia, ITP. The main laboratory difference is that Ivan syndrome has a positive direct agglutination test. Help syndrome occurs in pregnancy and is associated with the raised liver enzyme. Malignant hypertension is an important differential not to be missed as the treatment is with good control of the blood pressure. Catastrophic antiphospholipid syndrome, APS, is a medical emergency and patient may have underlying SLE. Catastrophic APS causes multi-organ failure and the prognosis is generally poor. Investigation for TTP or HUS are mainly to identify the presence of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, MAHA, thrombocytopenia, renal impairment, and to rule out other possible differential diagnoses. Shown here are some of the important investigations that need to be done. We would also need to look for possible etiology of the TTP or HUS, such as autoimmune disease and infection. TTP is a fatal disease if not identified early with a high mortality rate of 80 to 90 percent. The widespread recognition of this disease with early initiation of plasma exchange have improved the survival significantly to about 70 to 80 percent. The plasma exchange is done with fresh frozen plasma or FFP. Patients usually have transient drop in platelet count before further improvement in their status. TTP is a prothrombogenic condition and as the platelet improves, antiplatelet agents should be added. Other agents that can be used when patients show poor response are agents such as steroid, monoclonal antibodies such as rituximab and chemotherapy. We will need to identify possible underlying etiology for the TTP such as underlying autoimmune disease or retroviral infection. HUS is usually treated conservatively as patients have good recovery of their organ function. Occasionally, certain patients may require supportive treatment. In summary, TTP is a fatal yet highly treatable disease with early recognition and intervention.